There's two kinds of people. Those who have seen my shop tour of Luke and Malta's workshop and those who are going to have to stop this video and check it out now. Now Luke already had a grinding fetish before he got this lovely MyFit MG12 cylindrical grinder but outside grinding wasn't enough so he needed the internal grinding attachment as well. So I need to make a pulley up for this internal grinding spindle. Now Luke's internal grinding spindles, similar to this one, one of these cartridge spindles, and it also has a tapered attachment to the shaft for the pulley. The difference between Luke and myself is he has the foresight to not only design it with the taper, but also put a thread out on the outside portion of the pulley so that you can easily press the pulley back off. And that thread makes it kind of difficult to do this on a manual lathe. This is going to turn at about 20,000 RPM, so it's going to need to be turned in a single setup to prevent run out and vibration. While the thread's easy enough to do, facing away from the chuck, and it's easy enough to set up this taper angle before you start using the top slide, the difficult part will be setting the taper diameter and you can't measure it until you take the part out, blew it up and try it against your spindle shaft. But if it's wrong, you can't put it back in and turn, any, turn anymore. You'll never get the concentricity back. This should work fine on a CNC. So let's drop the tool parts and see what it looks like. There'll be four tools, boring, including the relief for the threads and the taper, turning the outside and turning the thread, and of course, finally parting off. Pulley diameter is 42 millimeters, but if we have time, we'll cut a second one at 35. Oh, g'day, Luke. What brings you here? Well, thought I'll come say hello. We got a project to do. So this is the stock. For this job, we're going to need a few tools that I didn't have. So this is going to be our thread gauge to make sure we've actually put the right thread in it. And Luke also brazed up this internal threading tool, which we're going to need to grind to shape. Right, so the first step is just we need to just grind off the excess steel before we start grinding carbide. Cool, I get to use my rolling stand for the Clarkson. Okay, so my first idea for grinding this was just to hold it in an ER collet chuck in my universal head, but I've got too much length here. I can't bring my table back far enough to get this onto here. Hey Luke, would you be able to grab the three axis chuck? Sorry about the audio here, I failed to push the microphone jack all the way home into its uh, socket. But first we just had to grind down the end of this tool, then swing the vise over for the first angle. This was the easy side to get to. For the second angle, we played around with various vise setups but couldn't get that to work. So then we had to switch back to the universal tool holder and also flipped the diamond cutting wheel around. But that setup then worked fine. The first tool we're going to need is going to be the internal boring tool because we figured we'd do the probably most difficult tool path first. As far as we can tell, based on our measurements, we'll have enough clearance on this tool to do the internal taper and of course clearance out here for the threads. Well, there's a bit of optimization needed for that toolpath, but it wasn't terrible. We've already air cut with this toolpath, so let's try a real cut. Once you have it set up, CNC threading is quite impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Let's see, does it fit? No, it doesn't, it's too tight. It's like significantly too tight. We need to open this one up a little. Oh, look at that, it fits first time. Perfect. 
Now because this is a flat belt pulley for a grinder, the next thing we need is to turn the outer diameter to its uh, final dimension, which is 42, and put like a curved crown onto there. And we'll also go into the end and put a little bit of a chamfer on ready for, for cutoff. I reduced the feed rate for the final finishing cut, but it's too little. It's, it was much nicer surface finish on the earlier cut, huh? We've tweaked the tool path so the next time we run it, this is going to have a much higher feed rate like it had during the roughing pass, because that was a beautiful finish. Just double check the diameter. It was at uh, 41.99 when I was looking at it. The last tool path is parting. Unfortunately, I've damaged my carbide parting tool, so we're going to be parting with uh, high-speed steel, which is going to be a very slow process, but let's hope we can get it to work. Shit. It was too much, huh? Probably clearance on the side. It just get hot and nipped up, maybe, or or just even the constant extra drag on it. It just yeah. adds extra tool pressure. I'm guessing that the part is not dead. I'm guessing the tool holder is probably toast. It's even still sharp. It doesn't even look chipped. So there we go, that's the taper, which we hope is the correct taper for the internal grinding spindle. First attempt, sort of okay, but it'll probably be functional, but we can do better. So we've improved the tool path a bit, especially boring out that inner part. I've added a bunch of retract moves and optional stops so that we can remove all the bird's nesting that builds up. I've also added a higher feed rate for the surfacing because that was rubbing and caused a bad surface finish on the ground wheel portion. And the last thing is this cutting off. It was obviously working okay until it jammed up. For the cutoff I've added now, go in three millimeters, come out, move over a bit, next three millimeters, come out and just basically go backwards and forwards so that the tool's always got side clearance. But before we get started, we're gonna have to face off the stock. Let's do a facing cut using the macros which uh, Andy Pugh wrote for Linux CNC. So I think I've got that all nicely set up and let's go. Here I put an M1 conditional stop in the wrong place with the tool in engagement.
we'll consider that toolpath a success. Now that is nice, huh? That's what we'll have a shovel in for. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, that was stupid. I was trying too hard to clear chips, although the chips were not really a problem. Got this tool caught. It obviously caught hard enough to bump the pulley slightly out of alignment, and now that thread is no longer concentric with the bore. The thread itself is only gonna be used for pressing it off the shaft. It's not important in that sense, but it still sucks to do this halfway through a really nice looking part. Although this part's scrap, I'll still run the cutoff tool path just to make sure it does work and I've got nice clearance on both sides of the tool and it doesn't nip up again. Put some nice scratches in it for you so it gets, you've got something to surface grind off. And see what that surface finish looks like on the inside. Oh yeah, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, definitely better than the first one we did. You can see the reflection of it. This is now going to be our third attempt. Uh, let's hope this time I don't jam a tool in while trying to remove swarf. And let's hope the cutoff works with this amount of extension. The rest of it, well, you know. Doesn't time fly when you're having fun in the machine shop? So this is the most perfect one we've done so far. Let's hope that internal taper works for it. That really is some pretty tough steel, isn't it? Right, with one good one in the bag, we could use the last piece of stock to make a small pulley because Luke also would like to get up to 24,000 RPM for internal grinding. So for this one all we did was run the same toolpath 
and just offset it by one millimeter each time it completed and we brought it down to 35 millimeter diameter. So we started there, rough finish, inside and out, but it's got the best thread. On the second one, I munched the threading tool with my, while well, trying to clean out Swarf. And unfortunately, we never ch actually checked that again. But if we look at the tool, after I crashed that Swarf extractor into it, it would have been the best time to have reground it. So the threads on these last two, which are the good ones that are gonna be used, are actually not that clean. I mean, they'll work. The 28 by 1.5 gauge that Luke made screws in okay, bit tight but it'll do the job. Back in Malta, after his vacation in Vienna, I asked Luke to send me some clips showing how it all worked out. And he said we got a good fit on the pulley. He blued that up and almost no run out. So we're happy with that. Well, so to get it running, I think that needs a motor maybe, large pulley, belt, I guess, and uh, probably a belt guard would do. Looks pretty quick on projects like this. Uh, he sent me a few more photos showing how far he'd got on it. Now he's just waiting for the belt that he's ordered and he can test it. Thanks a lot for watching. And Luke, thanks for coming to visit me. It was nice to see you, mate.